you pick the wrong fight. Obtain between the two and That's it. Down. You're all. Fire support. We've been killing to me. Yeah. Do it. In an instant. Impact block. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. What the? When did it get pitch dark all of a sudden? The lights are all out. Think it has something to do with the explosion back in the Forbidden Zone? Doe? You two. Faria, Avakir. Thank goodness you're safe. Avakir filled me in about everything. About how I ambushed you all. She doesn't remember a thing. So she really was being controlled. He told me about Tarnigan, too. Is it true? What difference does it make? What's done is done. Stop casting me off! Just for what? Faria, once. not now. It can wait. Dohalim, Lenegas is in grave peril. So I can see. It's the city's core reactor. It's damaged. Some of the basic systems we've managed to keep online, but complete restoration still a way off. You're an elite technician, though. You can fix it, right? If so, then what's the problem? Panic's begun to set in among the citizens. Until now, whenever something like this happened, the Sovereign would issue a decree. But this time, not so much as a peep. Any longer and we run the risk of riots breaking out before we can get things back up and running. Forget the Sovereign. I doubt you'll be hearing from him anytime soon. What's that supposed to mean? Do you know something I don't? Suffice it to say, the Sovereign isn't the kind of ruler we thought he was. That is, if he ever even existed, which is looking doubtful at this stage. Are you out of your mind? Why, if people knew that a lord such as yourself was whispering such blasphemy, they'd... There's no time to explain now. It sounds like we need to find a way to keep Lenegas from spiraling out of control. We need to stop that riot. But how do we do that? Riots feed on discontent and unrest, right? So if we want to keep the peace, we just need to put people's minds at ease. At ease? Like by letting them hear directly from someone they trust. That's it. Who's the highest ranking person in Lenegas right now? Lenegas wouldn't have a next in line. After all, you said the Sovereign rules over everyone directly, right? Correct. The closest thing to an authority figure would be a lord. And the only one left is... Ah. Very well then. Avakir. You mentioned a few facilities were still online. Which ones? Uh, 
Why hasn't the Sovereign said anything? Please, won't somebody explain what's going on? Is it over? What's going to happen to all of us? Heed me now, fellow Renans of Flanagus. It is I, Lord Dohalim Ilkaris of Elden Menencia. Look up there, it's Lord Dohalim! Hold on! He should be in the crown contest! Shouldn't he? Why isn't the Sovereign talking to us? The Sovereign is seeing to other matters right now. In my capacity as Lord, I speak to you in his stead. You're afraid. As people so often are when faced with the unknown. I hope you'll allow me to put your fears to rest. The city's core reactor has experienced a malfunction. However, we have our top engineers attending to the matter, and things will soon be back to normal. I know that you feel abandoned. Perhaps more scared and alone than ever before. But I ask you all to keep one thing in mind. You are Lanagus. Not the Lords and Sovereign. The solidarity of its citizens is the mortar that holds it together. If we don't allow ourselves to be distracted by our differences, if we put our hearts and minds together and stand as one, I am confident we will find new hope. I would be honored to stand with you. Not as a person of lofty or rank, but as another human being among them. I hope that you'll lend me your strength, for if we can persevere as one, I know a bright tomorrow awaits. Your speech seems to have done the trick. Looks like the city won't be descending into chaos after all. I only pray the relief will tide the city over for the time being. What you said earlier, about the Sovereign possibly not even existing, was it true? It's still too premature to say with any certainty, but I believe so. This whole time, this world we've been fed was a lie built on nothing but falsehoods. But... it can't all have been... I can believe it. After everything I saw in the Forbidden Zone, what they did to Faria, it's the only explanation that makes sense. But what about Hierarchy of Akir, Authority, the very foundations of Renan society? How can we live without someone to guide us? I'd say we found someone capable of doing just that, wouldn't you? You? You can't be serious. I have business I must take care of first. But once everything is over, I shall return. But not as your sovereign, nor as a leader the likes of which the people here are used to, I think. But how else do you propose to rule? I'm not sure yet. All I have is a feeling that here in Lenigus, a new dawn is on the verge of breaking. One in which people won't be judged by birthright, or on the power of their astral arts, but on other things. More important things. Things like... Oh, I don't know. Musical talent, for example. When I bumped into you after all those years, I said you were no different. But I was wrong. Truth is, you were always different. I feel like, like, maybe now I can finally begin to accept Turnigan's death. To see a future. <laughs> you go finish whatever it is you've got to do. I'll hold down the fort here in Lenigus till you get back. Thank you. I guess you're not going to make it to Menencia for the foreseeable future, huh? Indeed. Forgive me. The people of Eldamen and Sia can look after themselves just fine. It's the ones here on Lenigus who need someone to guide them. Besides, with you leading the people here, it'll help spread the idea of coexistence beyond Menencia's borders that much faster. 
Sounds like you're in it for the long haul. How could I not be, after the second chance that I've been granted? From this day forth, I shall dedicate myself to the future inhabitants of this world. Though the memories of the departed shall remain forever in my heart. Remember, you're going to be leading the people here, not ruling them. True enough. Whatever would I do without you, Kisara? With or without her, I suspect you're gonna have your hands full when the time comes. We should be heading back to the ship. Business on Rena awaits. easy. I couldn't have done it without your words of encouragement, Law. Hey, you're the one who made the speech. I think everybody can share the credit here. In one sense, when all is said and done, perhaps I have been a slave this whole time, too. You? A Renan Lord? How do you figure that exactly? I was complicit in the Renan system, bound by its values, resigned to being swept along, without the resolve to take a stand. And when I realized the severity of my mistake, all I longed for was punishment. A lord. And yet my first instinct was to place my fate in the hands of others. I think I can relate. I couldn't stand watching my people bow and scrape their way through life, but I didn't know what else I could do about it either. The ability to think for yourself and be your own master, that's what separates a slave from a free person. At least, that's what Law's dad Zephyr used to say. Zephyr taught me how to fight. But in doing so, he also taught me how to live. Even if it means stumbling along the way. If it's on a road of our own choosing, free of regret. Why, that's the road of freedom. Or, to put it another way, so long as his heart is compromised, even the loftiest of kings is no freer than a slave. I think I finally understand now. This Zephyr character sounds like he was a wise man indeed. I only wish I could have met him. There's just... so much I wish I could ask him, especially now. I wonder, have I been correctly carrying on the torch that he passed to me? How long have you known? Known what? about the darkness I carry inside me. You seem to have been aware of it for quite some time now. Why ask me now? What does it matter? But, yes, I have. I've pretty much known that something was gnawing at you ever since we left Menencia. So basically since the very start of our journey then, just when I thought I couldn't feel more ashamed. Leave the past where it belongs. We have no need for it now. You're forging ahead. That's what matters. If my brother could see you, he'd be proud. <laughs> not as proud as he would be of his sister, I'm sure. Well then, just as well it's not a competition, huh? <sighs> Kisara? Anyone at home in there? <laughs> Sorry. Did I look distracted? Among other things. To be entirely honest, I couldn't tell whether you were smiling or frowning. You were thinking about Dohalim, weren't you? <laughs> that obvious, huh? I was just thinking how good it is to see him moving forward at last. It was always so infuriating, knowing how capable he could be if he just put his mind to it. A prisoner trapped in a cage of his own self-doubt. But now, he's finally beginning to spread his wings. I'm happy for him. So, then why do you look so sad? Oh, I don't know if I'd say sad. There's a bitter sweetness to it, I guess. It's good and... strange, knowing that he won't be needing me anymore. It probably sounds weird, doesn't it? I have this massive worry off my mind. I should be jumping up and down for joy, right? Must be that maternal instinct of yours at work. Rinwell's right. 
You're like a mother bird, finally letting go as her child takes his first shaking and nervous flight from the nest. A pretty big child. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. I wouldn't like to see Dohalim's face if he heard you say that. All this has made me realize I can't allow myself to become a prisoner of my own making like he was. If Dohalim can forge his own path ahead, then I can too. I won't be left behind. thought we'd find answers on Lenigus, but we just ended up finding more questions. You can say that again. And now we have more problems to fix, too. Like figuring out how to reform Lenigus. That can wait for now. We've got more than enough on our plates to deal with as it is. Like figuring out who's really running the show on Rena. Yeah. Which is why we're going to the Renan homeworld. All the answers we've been looking for are on that planet. The person responsible for all this. The Red Woman and the Renes Alma. The answers have to be there. Are we prepared to finally find them? So, what do we do first when we get there? We know nothing about the Renan homeworld or what we might face once we arrive. We should get a feel for how things are on the ground before we take any serious steps. It's also entirely possible that the first thing we're going to face is an attack. If we come across a capital, we should- ah! Ah! What?
Damn! The hell just happened? Our course has been altered. The coordinates are pointing to a different destination. What's that? The ship's controls aren't accepting my commands. The engine is being shut down. That's bad, right? Quite bad. We've lost control of the ship. Is all of this the Red Women's doing? Are they trying to finish us off before we can land? <laughs> Everyone! Look there! Flower blooming out of Retta? But that flower looks like it's absorbing all of Dennis' energy. And it appears Lenigus is serving as a conduit for that energy to reach here. Could that have been its true purpose all along? If that's true, do you think the people back on Lenigus are all right? <sighs> we can only pray that they are. Damn it! Haven't they taken enough already? When is this going to end? The Flower of Oblivion. With everything that's happening, we need to get back to Lenigus. Is the ship still offline? Unfortunately, yes. Even more so than when it laid dormant. Can you fix it? Starships are extremely complex machines. One wrong move while we're out here in space could very well cost us our lives. So what? We're just stuck inside here, floating around? For how long? <sighs> I don't believe this. We've made it all this way, and now we're stuck here? We're watching Dana die before our eyes, and we have no choice but to sit here and starve to death? Look, calm down. You're not the only one who's worried here. Right. Sorry. It's still too early to give up. There has to be a way to get out of this. Alfin. Ah! Now what? The starship, it... it's back online? No, this is different. Something is pulling our ship in towards it. We managed to get moving, but where are we? It looks like Lenigus in here. Do you think we might run into more Renans here? 
Or those red women? Perhaps. Someone brought us here. The question is, who? We haven't been ambushed, so that probably means they aren't hostile. Still, why would anyone want to bring us here? Uh, hey, Shion! If they wanted to attack us, they could have done so while we were back on the starship. We should see where this path takes us. Ah, Shion, just in the nick of time. Here, lend me a hand while I... No! What the... Oh, right. The thorns. <laughs> My bad. No, I'm the one who should apologize. I overreacted. Again, Law? Can't you even go a minute without putting your foot in your mouth? Seriously, it's fine. I'd rather that than people feeling like they're walking on eggshells around me. Besides, I'm the one who should be vigilant about not touching you guys, not the other way around. Actually, I've been meaning to ask. Not being able to touch people... Does it ever get lonely sometimes? I guess I never really thought about it in those terms. It was either accept it for what it was, or come undone. Before long, it was just part of my everyday reality. I think I even forgot there was another way to live. Which isn't to say I didn't feel alone. I did. Always. So numb to your reality, you couldn't even recognize it as loneliness? I don't know how you managed. It's fine. I know I'm not alone anymore. But... I can't even touch you. No way of lending you a shoulder when you're down. Even Alfin. I appreciate the concern. Until I get rid of these thorns... I guess I'll have to put up with it just a little longer, but not forever. Alfin promised me that. Maybe it'll be soon, maybe it won't be. But either way, the day will come. And I'll be ready when it does. Yeah, just hang in there. One day, we'll share a big warm hug. You'll see. I promise. <laughs> Boo! Ah! What the? Are you out of your mind? This isn't the time for games, Rinwell. Oh, come on. How am I supposed to resist with you looking all jittery like that? It's called experiencing feelings appropriate to the situation. You ought to try it sometime. Y yeah, but seeing you act all nervous, you're making me start to feel nervous too. Uh, oh, sorry. Staying alert is important, but too much caution can cloud your judgment. Try to strike a balance. still can't get over what we saw happening outside the starship. Yeah, our planet's really not doing too hot right about now. I've only ever seen Rena from the surface of Dana, so I figured it was just another round planet like ours. Still though, I never would have imagined Rena actually looked like that. And what's the deal with that giant flower coming out of it? Beats me. I have absolutely no clue. It's so surreal. It looks like a broken egg or something. Rena and Dana. We were taught that both worlds were spherical bodies that floated amongst the stars in the heavens. But to think that they lied to us not only about the Sovereign and the Crown Contest, but also the form of our own planet. Dohalim. Okay, who's the wise guy that summoned us here? Someone formidable enough to bring our starship along with us. They must be here somewhere. Let's find them. That beam of light joining Dana and Rena. It was the Renan side that it first came from, right? 
That's what it looked like. And then the Danon side responded. Perhaps it was some kind of directive from the Renan homeworld? To reawaken the Wedge and Lenigus? Which would mean that whoever's behind all this is on Rena after all. But what are they after? Is it really worth going through all this trouble just to steal Dana's energy? Try to stay calm. With so many factors we don't understand, dwelling on it won't get us anywhere. <sighs> what is it? No, it's just... Zephyr once told me the same thing. So much for me making progress, huh? You made it this far, didn't you? You notice something, you change it. That's all anyone can do. But you can't stand still in the meantime. This place looks a lot like that room we saw back in the Forbidden Zone. Huh? What's that? Ah, it's one of those! A red woman in disguise. Or is this their true form? So it was a trap? It doesn't look like it can move. Tell me, are you the one who brought us here? That is correct. It is unusual for me to have unexpected guests these days. It can talk! What are you? Hevrecht 35. Hevrecht 35? Is that your name? Correct. What is this place? No, wait, before that, just what exactly are you? Are you somehow associated with the Red Women? Before I answer, I have a question for you. How did you all arrive in this sector? We did not come to this place by choice. Our ship was brought here against our will, by a group of red women who can shift into the same form as you. In that case, we can assume my brethren who serve the Great Spirit have deemed you all to be a threat most grave. What do you mean, serve? Are you saying there really is someone more powerful than the red women, pulling their strings? What did you do to us? I examined your bodies. You have not been harmed in any way. Identifiers detected. The Sovereign and Maiden are among you. However, you aren't under its control. I see why they viewed you as a danger now. Oh goody, more riddles. Do you think we can trust this thing? Like it or not, it may be our best chance at a ticket out of here. Let's at least hear it out. I shall now answer your questions. We are Helganquil. The red women you encountered previously are a form of disguise we employ from time to time, but not our true form. Hell Ganquil? You are on Dake Faisal, a celestial base which drifted here by accident. The will of Rena's great spirit no longer reaches us here. 
Since my sudden separation from the Great Spirit's influence, I have used any and all means to extend my lifespan. As I have done so, I have also set out to monitor and research Rena and Dana from this position. A question. What is this Great Spirit of which you speak? Is it something that rules over your kind? Correct. The Great Astral Spirit is a large mass of astral energy that fills all of Rena, one with its own will, a voice we cannot refuse. A voice? Just like Dana. The voice of the Great Spirit speaks to our hearts directly, and we have served it without question throughout the ages. Does that mean it was controlling your minds? Wait a second. Could this Great Spirit be the true Sovereign of Rena? The true ruler of Rena? It could be the same thing that's controlling Volron. Wait, back up. You're telling us this Great Spirit of yours is the one that ordered you things to harvest the astral energy from Dana? I'm not sure I believe that. Why not? We've already made contact with the will of Dana back in the Wedge, and in the Forbidden Zone on Lenegas. If Dana has a will of its own, I don't see why Rena wouldn't. Maybe not, but think about what you're saying. If Dana has a will like Rena, then that would mean that we've been controlled by the voice of Dana this whole time, just like these things. Dana's will hasn't been forcing us to do anything. Yeah, but... Let's assume that what Hevrek 35 claims is true, and that we are indeed cut off from both planets. Even if we had previously been under the control of Dana's will, we would have noticed now that we are disconnected. Your fear is not based in logic. The voice of Dana is much smaller and quieter compared to that of Rena's great spirit. Rena's astral energy is amassed at its center, whereas Dana's is shared among all its constituents. So thinly is that energy spread that it cannot coalesce and formulate a will. Our findings here indicate as much. Which explains why we felt its will where we did. The Wedge and Lenegas are where so much of that energy had been accumulated. The Great Spirit's desire is to consume all astral energy. And the pursuit of that desire is why you see Rena in its current state. As a result, it has turned its attention toward Dana. Is that why the Crown Contest is necessary? So that the Great Spirit can feed off of Dana? Indeed, and it was to that end that we Hilganquil devised the Crown Contest. Had the initial spirit channeling from 300 years ago succeeded, all of Dana's astral energy would have been seized. <sighs> but the ceremony failed. Lenegas was severely damaged, and you lost both the Sovereign and the Renesalma. Correct. A change in plan was required to ensure the spirit channeling success. However, recreating the Renes Alma required a vast amount of energy. That is why we turn to Dana. So that was the real purpose behind the Crown Contest. An efficient means to harvest the necessary energy from Dana. This is all happening because of me. Nevertheless, you still haven't answered one of Alfin's original questions. Just why have you brought us here to your base, Hevrecht 35? First, it was to confirm the identities of you, my unexpected visitors. Second, it was to ascertain whether you would be likely to accept my request. A request? But what could someone like you want us to... I wish for you all to slay the Great Spirit. I'm sorry, did you just ask us to kill your master? I did. It is in your best interest that you do so, I might add. What makes you say that? Lenegas has entered the final stage of the spirit channeling plan. As we speak, Dana's energy is being harvested en masse and transmitted to Rena. If nothing is done about the Great Spirit, it will not be long before all is lost. You're saying the destruction we saw earlier is just the beginning? That... We won't let that happen. 
Why do you want us to kill the Great Spirit so badly? Is it to save our world? To free you, Helganquil, from under its control? Why? No. My primary concern is validating our findings and analysis, which have taken many years to realize. As such, it is my desire to see how your actions impact and change these systems. However, I will not deny that vengeance also plays a part. Vengeance? For what? In spite of our long service to the Great Spirit, our species is on the brink of extinction. You mean... you're dying? At this stage, it would be wise for you to talk with the others. Ask them what you need to know. Once you have your answer, return to me. If you agree to help, I shall fix your ship. Others? Just how many of you are there? I am the only Helganquil who inhabits Dig Faisal. Hey! Hey! It's no use. I think it's done talking to us. Let's take a look around. You can't seriously be buying anything that creature told us, right? I mean, it's practically blackmailing us into doing its dirty work. To be honest, the conversation went on for so long, I'm not sure I understood all of it. How about you, Dohalim? Were you able to follow it at all? At the very least, everything it said about the Renan Great Spirit adds up. At the end of the day, this whole chain of events comes back to astral energy. That being said, had we not previously encountered the will of Dana, I suspect I would find its story much more difficult to believe. The spirit of Rena wants to see Dana completely destroyed. But why? Astral energy is supposed to be a force that creates and shapes the world. It doesn't matter. I don't care if we're up against an entire world or what its game is. We're not going to let it destroy Dana. Right. There is one other thing that concerns me. How the Great Spirit, the Helganquil, and the Crown Contest are all part of a centuries-long plan is clear enough. But what about the Renans? How do they factor into all this? <sighs> now that you mention it, in all that talk, Hevrek 35 never even brought up the Renans once. And as for the Helganquil, we never did find out just what they are either. Maybe it had a reason for keeping its silence. Or perhaps there's even more going on. Maybe the others will shed more light on the matter. Let's find out. Who are they? Hmm... W what is it? Oh, my apologies. It's just been so long since I've seen any humans from the outside world. Are you a Renan? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Hmm? The Overseer told us to answer any questions you might have. Whatever you want to know, we'll tell you as much as we can. But be quick. Our subjects are undergoing a dramatic shift that we don't want to miss. What a weird guy. He must have meant Hevrek 35 when he mentioned that Overseer. And what was that about subjects? You don't think he meant Dana and Rena, do you? There isn't anyone else we can talk to. I guess we should ask around here.
Have you guys lived up here in Dag Faisal with Hevrek 35 for a long time? Yes. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head just how long it's been, though. We regularly go into stasis, so our sense of time has gotten rather out of whack over the years. Why are you all even here in the first place? Originally, this station was where we worked to perform maintenance on Lenegas from the outside. We heard that the facility ended up in its current location due to an accident. Oh, it was terrible. Apparently, there was some kind of accident, and when help never arrived, they presumed the entire facility had been destroyed. And you've been working for Hevrek 35 ever since? Well, at first we thought that there was nobody else inside the facility, but then it turned out the Overseer was there all along. What do you mean? The Helganquil have the technology to cloak themselves around us Renans. As long as they don't do anything obvious, a Renan won't see one, even if it's right in front of them. Which would explain why Xion and I failed to notice the Red Women previously. Do they employ an astral art of some sort? I haven't been able to scientifically confirm it for myself, but from what I understand, the type of cloaking they use is primarily achieved through mechanical means. In addition, they also used hypnosis devices and information control to get us to do what they wanted without being detected. It's a pretty sophisticated operation, especially since it avoids any unnecessary conflict. I have to imagine that's how Lenegas is still run. But aren't the Helganquil themselves controlled by the Great Spirit? If so, why aren't Renans affected by it in the same way? The Great Spirit's mind control only works on Helganquil so they had to employ other means to manipulate us Renans. You act like this didn't affect you personally. If I was you, I'd be mad as hell at their deceptions. I mean, sure, I was surprised when I first found out about it, but it happened so long ago. Hevrek 35 has clearly ceased concealing itself, though. Why is that? Who can say? My guess is it just got bored, or maybe even a little lonely. Don't you want to go back home to Rena or Lenegas? Our ship is going to be fixed pretty soon. You could ride with us. No way. If we went back after knowing the truth, they'd either just brainwash us or purge us outright. After all this time, there's nothing to be gained from going back. We've all agreed it'd be best to simply stay here and watch everything unfold instead. Things are going just fine with the Overseer. Not that it'll be around much longer. It can't extend its life any further. That said, I'm sure it's pleased to see the final stage of the plan before it passes on, though. Thank you for answering our questions. Can we talk to you for a few minutes? Sure. It's going to be a while before the two planets undergo their next shift, so I can talk until then. Please, tell us what you know about the Helganquil. You mean the Overseer species? I can't say I know much about them. Well, for starters, where'd they come from? <laughs> where else? From Rena, obviously. From Rena? Wait, are you telling us those things live right alongside the Renans down there? Of course not. There's really no such thing as Renans in the first place. Excuse me? Oh, I thought the Overseer explained everything. Apparently not. Please, tell us more. Well, in a nutshell, the Renans were originally created from Danans by the Helganquil. <laughs> But if that's true, then that would mean there aren't any people on Rena. There aren't. But there are Helganquil. That's what the name literally means in their language. People of Rena. But what need could they possibly have to create a whole new race of people? It was a way to bolster their dwindling workforce. I trust you're aware that the Helganquil are on the verge of extinction, yes? In essence, we were created to carry on their work for the Great Spirit after they all die. They gathered Danans who had an affinity for astral arts and proceeded from there. 
That's why we, as their descendants, can all cast arts, albeit to varying degrees. Let me get this straight. Are you saying Renans were originally created from Danans that the Helganquil kidnapped? Wait, that explains why almost nobody can use Astro Arts on Dana now. Helganquil technology is truly amazing. The way they alter their bodies is far less invasive than your conventional surgeries. They have these tiny machines that are practically invisible, which they insert into their bodies and... Enough! You needn't tell us anymore. How can you speak so calmly about all of this? I guess I can see how, when viewed in a certain light, their ways may sound grotesque. But if you ask me, I think they ultimately did us a favor. They saved us from crawling the earth in ignorance. If it meant their hands had to get a little dirty in the process, then so be it. Anyway, the Helganquil are the real Renans. Personally, I don't think it's such a big deal. They're also mostly the ones behind what you see going on between the two planets. I think that covers just about everything worth knowing. I see. Thanks for filling us in. Does he really expect us to believe that Renans never truly existed? How absurd. Dohalim. Just when I think we're getting to the bottom of it all, some new revelation smacks us in the face. Then let's hope this is our last revelation for a while. Do you know anything about a spirit channeling plan? If you mean the first plan from 300 years ago, then yes. Do you know what its main objective was? Yes. It was to use Lenigus to siphon off Dana's astral energy and send it to Rena. Exactly. However, there were two problems we had to consider. First was how to collect and send such a large quantity of astral energy without it becoming sentient. Second, we had to figure out how to convert Dana's energy so it would be compatible with Rena. I take it the solutions to those problems were to use the Wedge for the collection, and then the Sovereign and Maiden to convert the energy. We have a winner! However, the first plan failed when the Sovereign was overwhelmed and became frenzied. <sighs> the reason for that is because the Maiden lost control. I'm told he slaughtered many Renans in Helganquil that day. <sighs> For the next plan, we tried to recreate the Renis Alma, but we didn't have nearly enough of the other non-dark astral energy types. To amend that, we set our sights on Dana, and implemented a system whereby we could extract energy from it. And the crown contest began. Correct. Since the Maiden had been the failing point in the previous plan, it was decided to replace her role with machinery to avoid further mishaps. A new Sovereign had to be made as well. It was such tremendously difficult work, its success was dubious. But from the look of things, it would appear such worries were unfounded. So that's what the purpose of that room we found in the Forbidden Zone was. What about the flower that sprouted from Rena? Flower? Oh, that thing. That's the physical manifestation of all the astral energy that's been harvested from Dana. As I'm sure you've noticed, it's quite a lot of energy. At this point, it's likely that it's become physically integrated with Rena's planetary structure. Hevrecht 35 mentioned that the spirit channeling plan is entering its final stage. Is that true? It is. I never thought I would live to see the day with my own eyes, and yet here we are. Are we done talking now? If it's all the same to you, I'd really rather not miss anything that's about to happen. He talks like the potential end of the world is just another day on the job. You've got to remember that these guys have been living alone up here for a long time. Who knows what shape their minds are in? Feels like our whole world has been turned upside down. Is there anything we know that's still true at this point? Seriously, I'm still trying to process the fact that we Renans were created by the Helganquil, let alone the Sovereign and Maiden stuff. 
Let's take a moment to gather ourselves. I know all of this is a lot to believe and take in, but... I think it's fair to say that we've found the answers we've been looking for. Does everyone agree? Agreed. Though I'll admit that I never expected it to all boil down to Rena's great spirit being behind everything. Everything that's happened, everything we've endured, it's all because of astral energy. And to get that energy, the Great Spirit took control of the Helganquil. Then the Helganquil created the Renans, who went on to invade and rule over the Danans. Plus, the reason the Great Spirit can't directly control the Renans as well is likely because they were originally Danans all along. <laughs> Either way, I think it's fair to say we've all had a lot to take in at once. Maybe too much, even. We should probably take it easy and rest our minds a bit. Why don't we all take some time to think things over, before we decide on our next move? That's a good idea, Kisara. If the Renan Great Spirit really is behind all this, and we've got a really big fight ahead of us. Because it's not just Dana on the line, but Rena too. If we're going to do this, we need to be completely sure of ourselves. So let's go ahead and break off for now. We aren't in any immediate danger, so we should be okay. You sure you don't want to be alone right now? I could ask you the same question. I figured I'd get all my thinking in while walking around and checking up on everybody. I'll go along with you. I'm interested to hear what's on everyone's minds too. Sounds good. Let's go find them. Everyone's just gone their own way, huh? Yeah. Let's hit up each spot. Everything we thought we knew. It was all just a fabrication that the Red Women, no, that the Helganquil made up. Right. Assuming we can believe anything that Hevrek 35 has told us, that is. Well, if the names are anything to go by, it's possible the Helganquil could be behind the fruits of Helgen too. But if Hevrek 35 was telling the truth, and this was all just one massive lie, does that mean everything we've done up until now has been pointless? No, I don't think so. Or at least I hope not. I think it just means we've lost our foothold for now. That's all. Really? Well then, if we've lost it, I guess we'll just have to find another. All of us together. And if we can't find one, then we'll make a new one. End of story. Make one, huh? I see. Right then. Count me in.